So I'm from London, and I started working for TechCrunch uh, in 2007, and I decided that I wasn't very interested in Silicon Valley, and I was more interested in guys like you. So I went around Europe, and I'm, gradually I'm trying to now work my way through Middle East, Africa, and the rest of the world. So there you go. So, um, but uh, I'm based out of London, and it's very convenient because it means I can come here pretty easily. Uh, so I hope to see you guys over the next few years doing your startups and stuff, okay? Um, so this is a little bit of a chat about talking to the press, talking to the media. And what I'm going to talk to you about is the media and the news and not so much about PR and press releases and those kinds of things because that's all a different kind of a thing. So, right, okay. So here's my details, by the way. Um, Feel free to email information about your stuff. I'm going to tell you about how to talk to the press. So just wait before you email. Wait, 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 wait. Listen to the talk first, okay? And you can connect with me on those uh, networks. I don't tend to use LinkedIn much, but you can use that if you like. Um, I only use Facebook for people that I kind of meet uh, usually or whatever. But you know, feel free to use that as well. I know that everybody. Um, in this part of the world uses Facebook a lot. And I use Twitter too, of course. So, so here's what, what news is. News is a purple cow. Anytime, anybody seen a purple cow recently? Anyone? No? That guy over there. You're Irish. You, uh, you, you see purple cows at about 11 o'clock at night in the bar. Um, you, uh, see, you don't see purple cows much because they don't um, stand out. You know, they're, they're not very common. And that's what news is. News is th something that's not very common. That's what we are interested in, things that stand out. So just because you are a cow in a field doesn't make you news. If you're purple, unless maybe you're choc made of chocolate in Switzerland, there's a brand of chocolate in Switzerland, which is a purple cow, that is uh, more common. But that be, be standing out, be different, okay? News is man bites dog. It's actually an old phrase from the newspaper industry. News is not dog bites man because that happens every day. It's about man bites dog. It doesn't happen very often. Um, the other thing about news is that it's really about we like news that makes our titles big. Um, I'm not going to tell you what story that was, uh, but that was a day I got a million hits on a particular story I ran. Um, it was a, a, a big one. Uh, maybe I'll tell you later if you ask me in the bar. Um, so just being a startup does not make you newsworthy. So I want you to think about becoming newsworthy. You understand? Now, because just the fact that you exist doesn't make you news, unfortunately. Sorry. Um, now, here's an example of... An organize, uh, of something that is newsworthy. Do you remember this plane that went, came down in New York a few years ago? And it uh, crash landed on the water, and there happened to be a guy um, taking photographs on his camera. And this was around the same time that uh, TwitPic was a startup. And he, he used TwitPic to take a photograph of the airplane uh, as it had landed, and, uh, and all, everyone was saved. It was a fantastic story, incredible story. So, of course, TwitPic suddenly jumped into the news because they were part of the news, or they saw an opportunity. That was a way of them getting big. At the same time, on the right-hand side here, that is actually screen grabs of a video, which was a video reproduction of how the plane had crashed. And that reproduction was made by a startup who did, who specialized in, in, in creating video reproductions, three-dimensional video reproductions of events, and they put it up on YouTube and released it to the media, said, look, you need to know how this plane crashed and came down, etc. Here's a video of how it might have happened. So that meant that they joined the news agenda. If something happened in the news, and then they went, wow, we can really take advantage of this moment. You understand? So that was what it was about. Instead of just press releasing and launching and saying, hello, everyone, we're here, they waited and took a particular moment in time when everyone was talking about these issues 
to suddenly jump into the news agenda. And that's what I want you guys to think about. And I think the other thing about it is, is getting to know the media. So conversations, being able to converse with the media are better, you know, if you can converse with the media on a, on a normal sort of level, if you can get to know journalists or uh, people like that, and just explain to them what you're doing, but you don't have to sort of do a press release. That usually beats the whole kind of press release thing because press, release, press releases mean you just come out of nowhere. Um, and it's all about getting to know the news media. And it's ultimately, oh, hello, <laughs> following me everywhere. Um, it's all about negotiating before you actually say something. Um, what you want to do is have a, a conversation about what you're doing before you shoot the announcement, as it were. And here's why that is, right? This is the day in the life of a stress tech writer. And unfortunately, these guys know I'm a bit of a diva because i am <laughs> often got a lot of stuff on. Um, lots and lots of incoming, email, SMS, and it's just getting crazy. I mean, I don't know how many, how many messaging apps has everybody got now. I don't know about you, I've got at least five or six now that people are messaging me on all the time. And I kind of have to use them all because various different kinds of people contact me on different kinds of networks. But it means you end up with lots and lots of incoming, lots of inboxes. So technology journalists in particular have this, it's a nice problem to have, but it's still a problem. So you've got to remember that the person you're trying to contact to get in, into the news has a lot of incoming already. So you're going to have to think about that before you, you know, start communicating. And then obviously, a lot of journalists these days have lots of uh, things that they have to juggle. The old days, when reporters would sit in the newsroom and just make a phone call, go out, have lunch, come back, write up a story, all that is gone. That is all gone. Now, journalists are running, running around with, you know, phones, shooting video, writing stories, getting on planes, etc., etc. So it's lots and lots of multitasking now. Journalism is all about multitasking. So that's, that's also what's going on at the same time. So that you might, might be in a different time zone to you as well. So you've got to take that into account. So then, this is what kind of thing that happens to me. I get on Twitter, hey, Mike, we just launched our startup. Do you want to write about it? Okay, now, what happens next? Um, so, I have to now make a decision, and this happens to all journalists out there. What do I do? Do I stop everything I'm doing right now and move to your story? Or do I jump on the story because it's amazing. I have to make a decision. How long do I have that to make that decision? How long do you think? A few seconds. Yeah? Because there's really, unless you are the person that's going to tell me what Apple is going to bring out in the next week, I'm going to probably pass over, right? Or you've got to be, or you've got to be better than what I'm doing right now. So you don't know what I'm doing right now, but you've got to be better than that for me to drop everything to cover your launch. So do you feel lucky, punk, right? Do you know, I don't think anyone knows this movie from Dirty Harry. It's an old movie. How many bullets have I got left? Right? So you have to make that decision. And so that's why I'm saying to you, it's a good idea to start the process early and have a conversation with the media before you start pushing the button on your announcements. So the chances are it's unlikely that the journalist is going to drop everything just to cover you. Okay, That's why you do pre-briefings. One or two line email, maybe three lines. Look, we're doing this, we're doing it next week. Do you want, uh, is it something you're interested in? Yes or no? That kind of a thing. If you get a reply back, most of the things that you want to send to a journalist want to elicit some kind of response. Yes, 
cool, sounds good, chat next week. No, not really interested in, got anything else, right? So here's an ideal pitch over email. We're launching this, it's gonna compete with this, it's better that it, we've raised some money, this is good, sounding more interesting. We've got these investors, these invest, Ari over here is invested, amazing. Vitaly is invested, interesting people. Uh, you have the exclusive, even better, we like exclusives. Uh, we have, you, have, you have the whole day to write about, you have the whole week, so give me an idea, how long are you gonna give me to, to write about this story? And don't send a ton of attachments. By the way, everybody take a picture of this. This is super important. This is gonna save you a lot of time. Instead, because these are the kind of questions that I will ask you as soon as you email me, okay? If I, assuming I actually see your email, because I get a lot of email. So don't send a 20 megabyte PDF with a slide deck. Don't send a PowerPoint with 300 megabytes of pictures in them. We don't care, we just don't care. Get these basic pieces of information off the deck first, and that's when you're gonna start the conversation. Um, if you must send, you know, beautiful videos and PDFs and slide decks, or whatever, just send links to Dropbox or to direct links onto a file on a website or something, because all this kind of thing clutters up your email, and every journalist now, once a month, now goes through their entire email and deletes all the attachments, deletes everything. In fact, I know a journalist who deletes all of his email from the previous two months. He just doesn't care. It's all pointless. So there you go. Ah, I think I'm getting my point across now. Now, now these are kind of basic points. I'll, and I'll, I'll give Vitaly these um, uh, slides so you, he can share them on your... Uh, the website and stuff, you can guys, you don't have to take tons of notes, but let's, a little bit of points here. Um, you know, how do you negotiate? Is it gonna be an exclusive? When are you gonna post? You know, how long is the exclusive gonna last? Um, we are not going to talk to all lots of other media unless you uh, take, you know, unless you're not interested, etc. So be substantive in your first pitch, and also never, never ask permission. Um, are you interested in a press release? Well, I don't know, join the queue. Lots and lots of people send me press releases all the time. The point is, send me the information and then we can talk. Um, don't ask for permission, because that's just one other email I've got to reply to amongst 500 others. Uh, get to the point, this is an actual pitch. Mike, given your background, I thought you'd be interested in talking to the founder of blah, 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 with ongoing debates on whether blah, 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 blah. This is an actual pitch. It takes forever. Just get to the point real quickly. Um, now, other things. Right, uh, we're having a party, Mike. Come. Great. It's not news. Don't care. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll come and have a drink, but yeah, that's not the, that's not the news. Uh, great products are better. Now, if you get a great product together, and it, the journalist hears about it from third parties before you've contacted them, that's cool. Journalists really like finding things that nobody's told them about yet. There's a process of discovery. Journalists are weird people because we think, we kind of, we're egotistical, and we want to discover everything ourselves first, before anybody else. So if we find out about your amazing startup um, before anybody else, you haven't contacted us, we think it's cool because other people are telling us about it, then that's an interesting idea as well. So, um, I don't, I'll, I'll rattle through these. Another thing, if you want to talk to journalists, give them stories that are about other things, not just your company. Because it means that you'll become a great contact for them, and then eventually when you comes around to the, uh, you wanting to pitch them a, a story about your stuff, then they'll listen to you if you're, you know, if you're giving them some good stories. You can make your own content, make videos, blog, you name it, tweet, Facebook about what you're doing. Create lots of content yourself. So you can make lots of, this is what Apple does of course, they pick fights, they go after people and they say, uh, you know, Adobe is dead, bang, news. 
Um, always target the right kinds of people. Don't go to the journalist who writes about um, uh, gardening or fishing with a pitch about technology. Don't go to the technology journalist with a pitch about gardening. You know what I mean? Just be just simple stuff. But try and go to the one that actually covers the kinds of things you work in. If you're a SaaS startup, go and write to talk to the SaaS journalist. If you're, a, if you're a mobile app startup, go and talk to the start journalist that talks about mobile apps. Um, and um, so target the right journalist, the right writer, and also if you get to the influencers like tech blogs, like TechCrunch, often you end up getting national press afterwards because those guys watch the tech press for all the interesting trends. Um, you know, be, have a bit of personality about it. Don't have to uh, be too bland. I got sent a, a pitch in a, wo a secret wooden box once. I had to work out how to open it. I can't actually remember the name of the startup, but it was quite clever. Um, uh, we always like to talk to the people in charge and make decisions. Uh, just putting a marketing person up in front, in front instead of the CEO or the founder is not so exciting. We like to look at the founders. We're interested in those guys. Um, PR people tend to be kind of expensive. Apologies to lots of PR people if there are any in the room. But um, these are the kinds of people you only hire when you have too much incoming from the press to deal with and you need somebody to sort this out for you. You can do the same thing as PR people anyway just by forming the relationships I've just been talking about. Never say you're, there's no, you have no competitors. You're, there's only one company in this space and it's only you. Because that's not true. There's nothing new under the sun, really. Uh, so telling us who you compete with, the kinds of areas you're actually playing in right now, give us some context. Context is important for stories. Now, you've done all of the things that I've told you about, and you still didn't get any coverage. Don't worry, OK? Stuff happens. Steve Jobs just died and the media is talking, uh, talking about nothing else for the next month, right? Something big happens, that's it. it that's the kind of thing that happens. Um, and when you uh, pitch a journalist, uh, make sure that you, don't, you are polite, just be human, uh, respectful. Uh, you don't need to be too aggressive. Uh, it's uh, just be normal, because uh, we're just humans as well, just like you. So what's the story? Some, here are some examples. So you're going to, a company that's going to kill this company. Uh, you've got some interesting gossip about something in your space. You've got an interesting idea about how you're going to change the world with this trend that you're part of. You're part of an evolution. You're, there's lots of other startups in this space, and you're another one, but you're going to do things differently. You've had a million downloads on the App Store, something like that. Uh, we love the bad news stories. We love bad news. So that's also cool. Tell us about the bad news. And obviously, Ashton Kutcher invested. Cool, cool. Ashton's cool. We love Ashton. And you just hacked Facebook. That's another great story. So uh, these are kinds of ideas you should send the media, bullet points, embed codes. Get on Crunchbase and AngelList. These are global platforms which everybody in the investment and technology community looks at. And some other ideas, plain text. Uh, like this is the kind of stuff I just told you already about. Like don't send press uh, PDFs. So know who to contact, relate your relationships with the, with, the, with the press before you pitch. Network, come to events like this. Have a unique story, personalize it to the, to the writer, and lay out the benefits for that uh, title's readers. Don't be insulting, be polite. Don't, we don't need your whole life story unless I ask, and then, I really, and then it turns out that actually th there might be a story in you as well as the company. Um, don't sell everyone the same thing, and don't pitch you know, all the same angles. You know, come up with different ideas. Um, you don't need to, put, you know, don't do it for your ego. That's not really going to work. And be, be specific about what you're talking about. Uh, but of course, all of the things that you want to know is this. So do everything that I just told you, okay? Uh, and that might work. Right.
Thanks very much.